Welcome back to Climbing Psychology. Last time we talked about the flow experience, that mindset in which you experience deep focus, timelessness and feel of complete control and how to achieve it. This time I will show you what happens into your brain when you get into the flow state. When researchers tried to understand what happens into our brain when we get into the flow, two theories emerged. The first one is called transient hyperfrontality theory and was proposed by Dietrich. According to his theory, the explicit executive functions that are managed by the prefrontal cortex get inhibited. This would allow cognitive resources to be freed and employed by implicit processes, which are also associated with lack of self-awareness. In particular, it has been shown that a specific area called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is pivotal in these kind of processes. Despite there are some evidences in favor of this hypothesis and of this theory, there are many flow-like states like hypnosis and meditation that show a strong activation of those prefrontal areas. Therefore, a competitive hypothesis was raised by Weber and Tamburini. The synchronization theory of flow. The FTS proposes instead that the flow state is characterized by the synchronization of various areas across the brain, including, of course, the prefrontal cortex, but also parietal cortex and basal ganglia. This would allow various neural networks to communicate with each other and create that higher order holistic processes that resemble flow. Despite quite different, these two theories do share some elements, especially the role of the explicit function that get inhibited for the regulation of more implicit functions and emotions and reward. And this includes the role of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. But if you're wondering what that region does, well, there is a very long list of functions. You can find something here. But we could say that is involved with consciousness, abstract thinking, strategic planning, and sustaining directed attention. There is instead less accord when it comes to the modulation of implicit processes. We know that the basal ganglia might be playing an important role, and uh, these regions are very widely connected with many regions, including the limbic system that regulates emotions, but also the prefrontal cortex, of course, and the premotor cortex, which is uh, the area that is implicated with programming motor skills. Also, a key component of the basal ganglia is the dorsal striatum, which has been shown that it is linked to implicit learning. And in particular, both STF and THH models that the basal ganglia would be implied into the regulation of the implicit learning processes. But also the dorsal striatum is very important for the reward system. So it's implicated with that kind of reward that you get when you're achieving the goal and the balance between challenge and skills. So studying the neuronal mechanisms of flow sparked some kind of weird ideas into researchers and uh, started wondering whether it is possible to actually modify the activation of the brain through neurostimulation. And uh, we have many devices now that are non-invasive and safe, like TMS, TDCS, and others as well, that we use in research and in uh, treatments to specifically change the way the brain activates and have an impact on several outcomes. So for example, when I was in university, I actually tried both of them. I was a, a subject for different kind of experiments and I tried so both TDCS and uh, TMS. And uh, so there have been some studies that actually use TDCS to see if it's possible to facilitate the process of getting into the flow state. And the results were actually positive. So what is TDCS? So TDCS is um, an instrument that I use for non-invasive neurostimulation and what it does is that it modifies the excitability of the neuron so that it's easier for the neurons to fire, not to fire, by applying an electric current through the brain. 
and it has nothing to do with electroshock, absolutely nothing. I remember that the most that I actually felt on my forehead was a bit of like tingling and nothing else. And differently from TMS, TMS actually induces potential actions in the neurons. So for example, if you are stimulated on the motor cortex and on the area that is targeting the finger, your finger will move without you wanting it to move. It's a weird sensation, but it, it is interesting. But usually when we use 2DCS, we're modulating prefrontal regions and prefrontal regions don't have a direct connection with a specific function. It's much more holistic. So it's not as specific or as precise as with the TMS in which you can literally stimulate the neurons that make you move the finger and other parts of the body, of course. TMS and TDCS are actually used in several types of treatment, including depression and Parkinson's disease. And um, for depression is suggested for those who are not responding to uh, drugs, to medical substances. So maybe one day we will have top end athletes getting neurostimulated before competition, or maybe making some series of sessions before competitions. What do you think? Do you think it's unethical? Is it, uh, is it legit that some can have the, the money to get to the facility to get this kind of neurostimulation? Why not? So let me know what you think. Let me know if you would be willing to try it. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to support me and the kind of work that I do. I would really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.